This morning's project, we're jumping on this F450 right here. According to the owner, uh, she was having some probably electrical or sensor problems. Uh, pretty clean little setup. She's been sitting for a little while. And I noticed a little bit of what probably is diesel in the water, so she may need some injector cups. But all in all, a pretty good parts truck. Um, what uh, the main complaint was that it died on him two or three times. Big old heavy duty frame. Um, truck died on him two or three times, like the like you're driving down the road and the key just shut off. So I have a few ideas of what that may be, and we're gonna get into it and see. So first things first, we have no batteries, and I can't work with my big hitch on the front. So we're gonna take the hitch off and throw a battery in it and see what the computer says. You know, some viewers have asked me about this hitch. I just made this out of some 1 4x4. First shot at making something heavy duty enough to hold these. I've got some uh, inch and a quarter, inch and a half cable clamps that hold a channel iron onto the D-rings. And just a simple little hinge. Two and five sixteenths ball. And this allows me to buzz this onto the d-rings and i can hook it onto the truck pull the drive shaft it's for the automatic put it in neutral if it's a stick and leave the key on for the steering wheel to turn and you can tow these trucks just like they're behind an rv so a little explanation on the hitch that people had asked about <clears throat> If you do build one of these, having it heavy is nice because you don't have to worry about it because it's stout. But it is a pain in the butt when you're doing it by yourself. I used to do this in two pieces. I'd put this piece on first and then bolt this with the hinges. But for some reason, one of my hinges got galled on there. One of my hinge bolts. So I've been putting the whole thing on at one time and it's a bit of a pain. It's a little heavy. It ain't bad if you know how to grab it, but But it is a real handy way and a hell of a lot cheaper than paying a wrecker if you got to tow something. And usually, only reason the front bumper is off of this truck is it didn't have the D-rings. It had the, the blanks covering up the D-ring holes. So what we ended up, uh, I had to bring a set. And the easiest way to get to the attachment bolts on the D-ring is pull the bumper off where you can get an impact in there. So, pull the bumper off for this one, but usually, if they have D-rings sticking out the front, 
you can you got you ready to go you just put this on there and hook it up all right move this out the way and find us a battery all right well i'm not a big fan of these but this ground is missing one so we're gonna for the sake of testing things we're gonna put that on here all right All right, there you go. Couldn't find a bolt for that thing, so we used an appropriate forward ground. All right, we got battery power. Let's go see what the computer has to say. All right, so I got a couple of batteries put in the truck, and uh, we're cranking her over to see what's going on. So we got some codes here. Exhaust back pressure is probably a wire that's unplugged. Uh, internal cam. That's from having the batteries out. Water and the fuel is probably from the injector cup thing, I'm suspecting. But P1280, integrated control panel circuit out of range, high or low. I'm going to have to look that up and see exactly what that is. So let's back out of this. And go to custom data stream. So I set up some parameters so we're not monitoring every damn thing that the truck does. And the third item here, injector control pressure. If you watch that, when we go to try and crank the truck. Oh, now she's up. All right, a little while ago I was getting zero on that. Now we're getting... Uh, some voltage on there the only thing i did was play with the wires all right if you watch that second set of zeros there, it's icp pressure i had the uh that's the ipr pressure i had the icp sensor injector control pressure sensor unplugged just now and it was giving me 2000 and plug it back in and i'm getting zero all right, so that gives us somewhere to go, and I did see a code triggered. So I'm going to back out of here, go back to diagnostics, read codes, and see if we have a new... Ah. See what new code we got. Okay, so it did trigger a code, and it's probably that exhaust back pressure re-triggering. Uh, could be any one of them, but the codes didn't change. So I have to look into it a little further and see what I got going on. So let me let me do a little research and we'll see where we're at. I want to check this fuel. So I got a bucket up under here to catch uh, and a drain line. So I'm going to open up the ball valve here and we're going to see... I don't know if y'all can see way down there in the bottom. It probably won't focus. So we're draining into the bucket. So we're going to turn the key on. And the uh, fuel pump should fire up for about 30 seconds. And she should start peeing in the bucket. Which she is doing. So we got good flow there. I, sorry about all the movement, guys. So I'm going to turn this off. And let's take a quick look and see. Once this is done dripping. This is what we're looking at. This thing has got crap for diesel. So we're probably going to have to start there. Alright, so we're back here on this single cab 450. And I think we saw some codes it was throwing an ICP sensor code. And I'm going to get you all up here by the fuel bowl where you can see another problem I found. So I think the harness has been butchered on this a little bit. And it may be what's causing us some trouble. Let me get you in there a little closer. So I was pulling the IPR. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but... There's like three inches of totally stripped 
naked wire on there and the ends are like one hole is bigger than the other one so i think it got hot and that coil looks funky all right so it's been a few days since i got back on this 450 i'm gonna catch myself and you guys up so we changed the wiring for the icp and the uh, pigtail and the wiring for the ipr pigtail that had all the stripped wires and whatnot in it and i was still getting weird uh high pressure oil oil pressure readings anywhere from zero to 2200 and a lot of weird low numbers like 200 150 75 so the other i was I did, because this truck sat for a while i got to thinking the other day i woke up at five in the morning and had a little epiphany <laughs> i said i'm we're gonna check out this high this h pop and see what's going on with the high pressure oil because we've got fuel pressure it, it appears that everything's working we got engine oils at a good level so we're going to check this h pop out by pulling this little allen head key off or cap off and uh, see if that's bleeding down because this truck sat for a couple of years and i'm wondering if the reason we're not getting any h pop pressure is because h pop doesn't have anything in it to to pressure up so we're gonna test that theory out and then see if we can't put a little oil in it and see if that makes a big difference on this truck so let's see what we have all right let's investigate our situation here We're going to pull this little plug and we'll be able to see what the oil level looks like. Let's see. Oh yeah, she's low. Almost to the bottom. I don't think I can get a shot of that, but I'm just, this is not gear oil. I keep these empty bottles around for pouring like this. This is 1540 Rotella. And we're going this thing is going to hold eh, maybe 75 percent of this jug and this opens up a debate that people have on the on some of these tech pages of changing the oil some people want to suck the oil out of this now granted there could be some cases where people have not uh been changing their oil regularly and they got a lot of sludgy stuff and there could be some benefit to that but if you don't know how the inner workings of the 73 are there's a, a low pressure oil pump behind the crankshaft that pumps oil through the motor just in a traditional way getting the mains and all the valve areas and all of that done all right, let me put this cap back on. And then it, it brings it up here to the H-pop and fills this reservoir. It's constantly pumping, so the reservoir gets has an overflow. So as it fills up, it just overflows and runs back into the bottom of the motor. And if you're changing oil on these, yeah, it's going to turn black right after you crank it because you do have a quarter or so here, and you probably have a quarter or so in the oil galleys so unless you wanted to get really really anal about draining your oil you know you get 95 percent of the oil out and call it good so we were low here and we topped it off put the allen key back in let's see if let's see how she feels about it all right so we got a little gradu in our little auxiliary tank here but i still have to wash out the big ones so we got this set up and we're gonna see if our glow plugs will kick on and see if she'll crank up. All right, let me get the key. That would help. All right. So we're gonna, the glow plug relay was being a little sticky. So if she doesn't wanna crank, we're gonna have to check that out, but we're gonna let her, let the glow plugs warm up. Hopefully they're running. I'll put a test light on them and see if it doesn't decide it wants to start. All right, let's see what she does. 
and keep an eye on that oil pressure because the faster the oil pressure comes up the faster the age pop will get oil well there's our oil pressure and the age pop being filled up allowed it to pressure up I didn't have the scanner on it but I'm guaranteeing if we would have had the had our scanner hooked up and been looking at the h-pop pressure we would have seen uh, we would have seen it kind of climb from a couple hundred up to 2200 or so and fire up all right well we know we got some cooling and some other issues in this but that h-pop reservoir was the ticket on getting a running and we'll let it run for a while and diagnose anything else that's going on with it all right so y'all remember all the gradu that we saw came out of the fuel filter system and all that and been running it on a little pan of diesel i want to go ahead and get this sending section pulled out and wash that tank out and pump it out so it can start drying and we can get some diesel fuel in the tank and run it when we want and not have to run off that other diesel so let's get that going we're gonna pull out the uh, sending unit plug and fish it out through here. And oh, come on, you! All right, we already got our lines unplugged. I'm just trying not to have to drop the whole tank. I take a 13. Get a little little love spray and put on those. Alright, let's put a little little love on all of those. And mop up a little bit of the mess. Alright. in the mood all right let's move our stuff out of here ouch a couple of those is warm now as you can already see <laughs> the black foot is gone uh, I still got my suction hose in here so this is probably going to be a good candidate for the fuel tank mod which I have in some other videos but I think we're going to do away with this foot and the screens which I'm sure are clogged up and all the mod is doing is using the return line and the suction line you extend it with metal lines and do away with that foot which is probably all in pieces in the tank so let's put this aside and we shall get into sucking the rest of the gook out of this tank. I'm going to show you all what's in there so you can see. So I get questions about this all the time. This is just a float. You can see it's got a little rust and grime on it. <clears throat> this is the housing that has the two screens in it that always gives trouble on the Fords and this port is supposed to have a black foot on it it kind of looks like a oh like a plunger like a toilet plunger and that's the pickup so when that falls off it's in the tank and then if your truck starts running like crap at three quarters of a tank it's just because you're missing three or four inches of depth right here because the pickup tube fell off so once you get to a quarter tank it starts sucking air and then you're running like crap you put a little diesel in it and it runs fine let's go around and look inside the tank I'm gonna try and stay out of the light here so you can see there's a 
there's some something in there part of the probably part of that foot and the milky slop that's in the tank so we're going to set it up and suck all of that out probably rinse it with some water and suck it out a couple of more times and then um, once we get it good and clean we'll let it air dry and once that's done we can put it all together while it's air drying we'll address this and i hope the shade isn't messing with you guys but too hot to be in the sun right now okay let's see what kind of goodies we got here so this is the remaining pieces of the plastic foot that i was telling you about so that's all been disintegrated and gone as you can see it's falling apart now totally gone so i just opt to get rid of that stuff and we're gonna go ahead and start let me get an airline run over here but as you can see i mean this is all it's just falling apart so we're gonna do away with all of that because i'm not going to ford and spending a ton of money to put the same thing in there now granted that thing's been in there since 99 so it's 20 20 two years old but still in all they shouldn't put stuff in a diesel tank that's just gonna rot and fall off all right let's get some of this mess out of here yeah we're gonna have to prime up see if that's enough to get across there she goes Oh, that's nice looking in there. It's like a vanilla shake. Now, just how in the hell you think a giant ass cotter pin got in here? It's just amazing what you find when you go behind other people's stuff. All right, let me get a hose. We're going to rinse this out. That's a quick little look at the vanilla milkshake we got in here. We're going to rinse them out with the hose and pump them out a few times. Uh, let's see if we can get some of this mayonnaise out of this tank. Ooh, that's some... And you stir this up and it comes in with some really interesting stuff. Luckily I only had about a quarter tank or less of all of this funkiness. I'm trying to wash the roof too. In case anything's hanging up there while you got the hose in here. Suck all of this out and rinse and repeat. So it's flush and clean, so we're gonna take a big old bunch of paper towels and get them in here and mop up the bigger stuff. Found another piece to our foot that is rotted off. I still can't get over the size of this cotter pin. That thing is big as my hand. I've been in many a tank, I have yet to see a Ford tank that requires that inside of it. All right, Let me get this out. Get some more. We're gonna dry it out as best we can with paper towels and then 
the rest can air dry while we do the modifications to the sending unit and, and she'll be ready for action plastic <clears throat> got different chambers in here we got to get to all the little deep spots and suck it all up get out as much as the paper towels will let me and then we'll call that good and let the rest air dry oh. that gives y'all a little look see in the tank not too bad I still can't get over the foot in the giant cotter pin alright so we're gonna let this air dry I'm gonna hook my little temporary fuel bucket up to my blue and gray lines and uh, put her in the sun let her bake in the sun and dry out a little faster all right we got this sitting out here in the sun let the sun dry out whatever water we didn't give it the paper towels the other day and since that foot is um, I'm looking for my tools here since that foot is uh, all demolished and I mean, you can see it right here we fished as much of that out of the tank as we can and so rather than buying another foot that's just gonna create more trouble we're gonna do a hutch mod so we're gonna come in here first things first so we're 13 and a quarter inches deep from here to there when we measure from the flat spot on the sending unit that'll give us maybe an extra eighth so we're gonna set up our hutch mod to be quarter inch off the bottom so roughly 12 and three quarters uh, all right so we got our sending unit here and you can see you got a blanked off line and you got the smaller line is your return bigger line is your suction so your suction would pull through this foot which is missing and then the return comes back and it circulates through here and blows out this duck bill so we're going to take this apart i usually if i'm doing a hutch mod i don't usually disassemble this because i'm throwing it away but uh just to see what kind of interesting crap we may have in the screens for you guys i'm going to take it apart now if you're just cleaning your screens you just have to separate this here i'm not cleaning them i'm getting rid of stuff so i'm going to go ahead and make some cuts if i if my pliers will be sharp enough and get rid of this hose ah, there we go All right, sorry about the phone. So you got the return line right here, which can spew sideways. This pickup line you know, is gonna come up a little further. So you just don't want your return line shooting, shooting aerated, splashing around fuel around your pickup line, cause then you could pick up some aeration there. All right, let's see if we can pop this. There's little tabs right here and right here. So you just have to kind of work them and you're gonna kind of feel like you're getting ready to break the damn thing half the time. But um, that's just the nature of the game. Ah. See if I can get them started. I'll try and pop out one or two. There we go. And then I'm gonna hold that so it doesn't go back in the hole. 
and get this one on the other side. And then we can pop it out. Uh, and don't be surprised if one of them pops back into the damn hole. This kind of is a moody, moody little removal. See, now the other side popped in when this popped out. See if I can get it a little further out this time. And now the other side's popping in. This one's turning out to be quite fun. Alright. Now. They're all out. Come on, you. Let go. Let me get this duck bill thing off. And sometimes I'll save this duck bill, put it on the return line. Sometimes it's rotten, and uh, I don't feel like putting any more plastic stuff in there. All right, you. Get yourself out. There we go. All right. One thing you got to pay attention to is which ports are which, because your two screens sit on these right here. Because I've actually gotten this cockeyed and put them in wrong, but you can see this is your return line, this is your suction line, and this and this are your two ports right here. So your two port, the two big ports go to the screens. So let's see what they look like. And they don't really look bad, but that's the kind of rust and bacteria and all kind of stuff that'll get up in your screens and clog them up. So if you're driving and you start shooting a lot of black smoke, you might want to check that out at some point. Or if you buy a 7.3 that um, you don't know the history on and you don't know if the tank's ever been in and you happen to be in there, just jot, dive in and either eliminate these or clean them real good and put them in. As long as you're using good fuel and it doesn't sit for long periods of time, you're, you, you'll be in good shape. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this off and it just comes off like that. Okay, remember this tube right here is this blanked off tube. So small one is return, which is this one, and big one is suction. So we're gonna leave this alone. If you do extend this, make sure you leave clearance for the uh, float for the sending unit. But basically we're gonna stretch this out. So we had 13 and a quarter max. So from the surface of this to the tip has to be 13 inches. So what I'll usually do is take a 3 8 you got 3 8 and 5 16 now if you're not I, like I said this is pointing away and we're gonna extend this so I'm just gonna leave it just like that some people like to make this almost as long as this is and shoot that away but I don't I've done it like that and I don't see where I've had any issues um, and I don't see a lot of aeration in the in my fuel so I'm gonna just do it like that if I need to I'll pull it out later so I'm going to take a 3 8 and put it on here. And just, you can put it on for mock-up or you can go ahead and put it on and crank it down on a, it's just a 3 8 brass compression union. We're going to have 3 8 nut. I need to get a brass ferrule. But just for mock-up reasons, we can go right there. And I'm going to take this old piece of 
fuel line or brake line, something I had around here. I keep these old pieces of tubing, especially the 3 8 and the 5 16 just so I have tubing for this. So we're going to put that in there. And then we're going to mark it. Let me get a sharpie. All right, so we measured 13 and a quarter to the bottom of the lid, but we would also got to accommodate for the O-ring here, which is going to space us out a bit. So I think we could go 13 and an eighth. Now, I had an old marker on here from another project, so you got to make sure I just cross that out to make sure I don't uh, cut it there. So we're going to go up from the base of this. Thirteen and an eighth. So that should put us about a quarter off the bottom. Because we're thirteen and an eighth here. And again, this is going to, with the O-ring on this, that's a pretty thick O-ring. So that's going to space us out a little bit. And then, so we're going to cut this right here. And then that'll be our extension. And then that'll be it. Now, if you want to put a fuel filter, you could see if you could find a sock filter that would fit on a 3 8 which I may end up doing on this truck but also uh, another good thing that I've done on my other 450 is um, I'm getting ready to mount a fuel filter on the inside of the C channel like a 10 micron with a water drip trap so that can be it can be drained and that would mount between the tank and the filter to keep any rust from getting into the not the tank and the filter <laughs> it'll get in between the tank and the fuel pump to keep any rust and crap from getting in the fuel pump but I've run them with no filter and I've and I'm gonna put a filter on just because I'm keeping that 450 indefinitely but I've never had any issues either way so let's make this cut and find some brass ferrules for this and get it put together Open up our tube and cutter and get ourselves lined up on that mark. We got one of the cats hanging out over here, and Chewy is going bananas trying to warn me and protect me from the attack of the cats. All right, tighten that up, turn her. Tighten it a little bit, turn. Y'all know the drill. All right, the dogs are going bananas over the cats. Their cats are antagonizing. So this is cut to be, you know, at most a quarter inch or a little less off the bottom. So I would extend that just like I did here. I'm, again, I don't have the brass ferrules, so this is not ready to go. So the way this goes, you get the nut on there first. The right size ferrule because that crushes and then you get this started I get it hand tight I already have one on here and so that will come down here we'll get them hand tight now before I go crank on that and get the ferrule tight on there I'm gonna double check this one more time all right so I went a little lower a little over th just a hair over 13 right, I'm gonna take a 9 16 and a 5 8 and get these tight all right now get on there All right, so I cleaned around the O-ring. Uh, had a little rust and stuff on it, but the O-ring wasn't oversized or anything. So I think we're good for the reason the O-ring and I'm probably gonna have to get back in this tank uh, before it's all said and done anyway. So I just went ahead and cleaned the O-ring, cleaned the contact surfaces for it and put a little grease on it in case there's a little damage to it. And we're gonna call that good for right now. I'm thinking this truck has a 
the reason the coolant got crapped up was because it's got an injector cup issue so uh, I'm not getting into it right now I'm working on some other stuff so this one's gonna need to be able to move in case I need to cut grass or even use it to move a trailer or something around so we're gonna just put it back in for right now where we can do away with this blue pan which is filling up with love bugs right now so we'll be able to get some clean fuel in here and use this rig I'm gonna leave the radiator cap loose so that uh, when the fuel pump is not running, the hot water in the radiator doesn't pressure up and backfeed the fuel system. But we'll have to check it out before we're completely finished up with this truck anyway. So let's run these down and we'll go ahead and uh, put some fuel in this old girl. back up get them out of this poke this thing before I end up dumping all of this on the damn ground and make us a usable truck for around the yard until we can get back to her all right I'm gonna back her up and put some fuel in her out of one of the extra tanks and get on to the next thing on this one which be some more under the hood work and investigation 